What's going on you guys? I hope this video finds you all doing well. Despite our silence, we've been doing a lot of stuff over here. Um, on Monday, actually signing a very important contract for a project that we're working on overseas that I'm really, really excited about because once we sign that contract, there's no turning back and this project is happening. So I'm super excited, but I'm gonna stay tight-lipped on that for now. Um, you know how I do it, you guys. Um, I don't like to run my mouth until stuff is actually happening, but you are definitely going to see it on this channel. You are gonna see the entire transition and the whole buildup of our project is gonna be something else. Anyway, today's video, beauty rat snakes. These snakes I've worked with for many, many years. However, I'm seeing some really special things about this species that are really pushing it up to the top of my list as one of my favorites. Now, this has to do with a lot of different things. The babies are super easy to start, rodent feeders. The eggs are tough. Uh, the incubation of the eggs is really simple. It's not tricky. They're not delicate. The animals themselves get quite large, which you guys know large colubrids are, those are obviously very near and dear to my heart. But uh, the animals themselves are very interactive, super alert, very visual, and they're really tough animals. Um, they can handle different fluctuations in humidity and temperatures and all that. Just a fantastic species to keep in captivity. And obviously, as you guys know that at least follow the channel, we're moving overseas. This species is from that area. Of course, they also come from China and that sort of um, region of the world. Um, temperatures are different there. Uh, China can actually get quite cold, and so those animals are a little bit different, but I'm talking more about the tropical Southeast Asian species, subspecies of beauty rat snakes. Um, you have the Ridley eye, the blue beauties, um, and the other subspecies that uh, Sumatra and Northern Thailand and all that kind of stuff. Now we are going to be exploring a lot of areas. We've already seen many, many specimens in caves, almost 99% of those animals we found in caves. Caves are very unique. Um, populations that live in caves oftentimes will somewhat evolve um, with slight color variations with localized populations. And that is very, very interesting to me. And we're gonna really focus on that once I move overseas and we start doing a lot of our own field research and different things along those lines, really, really excited about it. But today, blue beauties, Vietnamese blue beauties, this subspecies is one of the largest ones. They get quite big. Um, there's two variants. Uh, some are more to a yellow side and some are more to a blue side. I have a lot of them here. They're young animals, um, yearlings or better. And uh, let's go take a look, you guys. I think you guys are gonna like this one. So I'm gonna start with blue and then work my way towards the, the yellow. And then there's some in intermediate animals in between that you guys are gonna be able to see. Now for you local people that come out to see us at shows, I had a pair of these on my table at the January Anaheim Reptile Super Show. Nobody bought them. Some people were looking at them, but they were mostly overlooked because, you know, you've got the mainstream people that are staring at all the fancy morphs and all that. Plus, when these are babies, they really don't look like much. <clears throat> so, um, anyway, nobody bought the pair and I decided to just hold on to them. This is the female of the pair and she just continued to get more and more blue. And there is no way she's leaving here now at this point. It is, this female is just a phenomenal example. The blue is coming in more and more um, as she grows and she's growing so fast. I mean, this was a tiny little like deli cup size hatchling in January. And now that this animal is already pushing three feet. So I don't really hold them a lot, but occasionally I will pull them out after a shed. We'll do some spot cleaning, of course, all the time. And while they are somewhat easily agitated or excited with, uh, with lots of movement and activity, for the most part, if you're calm, they're calm, and, uh, and they're just a really, really neat animal. So anyway, this is um, one of my bluest females. 
And let's move on. I have a bunch of animals to show you, so I'm just going to kind of go fast through these. Just want to show you the variation, mostly. Okay, so here's another, another animal. This happens to be a female, also one of my more blue animals. But there's so many different variations. Now, these animals are all captive bred. Um, some came out of Canada, and the others came out of a couple different... Uh, countries in the EU so they're all coming from different bloodlines the thing that strikes me the most is that the previous one that I showed you has a very sharp and very contrasty pattern this animal is somewhat blurry the pattern is kind of I guess blurry is the only word that I can really use to describe it um, but really pretty and I'm just really excited. You can probably see by the look on my face. I'm really excited to be working with all these, all these beauty rats. So let's move on. Uh, we're still in the blue area. Okay, so from here we're starting to move into something that I would call more of like an intermediate form. You can kind of see that there are some gold colors that are coming out, especially down that dorsal stripe. So it's still blue, still somewhat typical of the blue beauty, but you can see that there is some different color pigment coming out on this animal. The tail is somewhat more yellow striped rather than than the blue and the white kind of color, the faded color. So we're kind of in like the middle ground here. Okay you guys, so here's another one. This one I guess kind of a somewhat intermediate animal. The neck actually has a little bit of kind of a like a brownish green pigment to it which sort of fades out and it gives way to where like the blue color and the gold color are kind of like fighting it out in this busy pattern. I don't know which ones are my favorite. You guys put it in the comments below which ones you like the best. My goal obviously is going to be trying to breed like animals so I can pull a couple different color variations out of some selected breeding. I have enough animals. I actually have five pairs. I have 5.5 and they're all different. So it will definitely give me the freedom to do line breeding. I love these snakes, you guys. I just love them. I'm probably not going to show you guys all 10 animals, but I want to definitely show you enough animals to where you really get a feel for the, the flavor palette on these. It's just unbelievable. I like this snake right here. Every time when I when I do pull them out, which is very rare, my favorites change quite a bit. So this one is a male. Oh man, that's beautiful. So this one is actually going into shed, but there's a lot of gold coming out on this snake right here. Pretty interesting looking. I think post shed, it's going to be nice and these animals especially when they're young like this they're they're constantly changing it's very difficult to differentiate what your hatchlings are going to look like of course you can judge by the parents but there are some breeders that may only have one pair and they may have like a bluish animal and they're breeding it to a like a yellow kind of gold animal so it's very very hard to predict what the offspring are going to look like but with our plans, we are going to be selectively breeding some for the gold and some for the blue. And I think that should much better predict what the offspring are going to look like. And I wish this animal wasn't in shed. I bet it would just be super sharp and beautiful, but it does definitely show the gold color. Okay, and going back to what I said about the January Super Show, this is the male of the pair that I had for sale on the table that nobody bought. This animal, as you can see, is really coming out with a lot of heavy, heavy gold highlights to it. So this animal is going to be very, very different than the rest. Uh, very, very high yellow, high gold. So it's going to be interesting. There are more animals. I did not show you all 10, but I wanted to give you guys just a really good idea of the variation in the Vietnamese blue beauties. Okay you guys, so that's it for the blue beauties. I'm going to close the video out with this Ridley Eye, the cave dwelling racer that came in my Malaysia shipment. 
eating like crazy, already been treated for uh, internal parasites. I put a little flagell and panic here into the last meal. I'm waiting for a nice shed to come. Uh, the animal will clean up and look super nice. Um, but doing good, just like I kind of said when I pulled it out of the out of the box, um, I'm really good at taking care of these animals. But on top of that, the animals themselves are actually really, really easy to care for. Just very straightforward. And another thing that I want you guys to notice is that none of those animals struck at me. I was very calm, very slow, very deliberate. And that's what's necessary in most cases when you're actually interested in handling animals like this because when you're nervous and you're fast they respond pretty much the same in return so as long as you're calm and chill for the most part these animals are going to give you back pretty much what you're giving them and that is about it hope you guys enjoyed that video we'll do some more highlight videos i realize that we have highlighted some beauty rat snakes in the past and other species in the past but you know, that's a lot of years already going back, and I think a lot of people aren't going back to the older videos. They want to see the new stuff. So we have a lot of new people to the channel, new subscribers, and so I probably will be going back and redoing and updating some of those projects, because I know you guys like to see it. At least some of you do anyway. And I think we're going to shut it down at this point. Thank you again for watching. Appreciate your support, and we will see you guys in the next video. Take care, you guys.